Frank, I set up a bit of a surprise for you all. So we've got the third or fourth prize drawer of today. And the other directors don't know anything about it. This, this is my parting shot. In a second, check underneath your tables. Ten of you have won an invitation to five networking. The new... <laughs> You get four one to ones and forty five seconds. Bigger is better. <laughs> You'd be surprised. Seven and a half years I've been on this team. You'd be surprised how many other networking groups have done rubbish like that. Forty five seconds. Four one to ones. Going to talk very briefly about more for M, or I'm not actually because we've changed the name of it. It's going to be called Invite a Friend now. Oh, really? Trying to make it easier to understand what it does. Trying to make it easier to under, for people to understand what they need to do. I'm going to talk a little bit about more for end Invite a Friend, Network for Free, old school. And then I'm going to talk about how to get this thing working faster for you. Because when you're talking to your members, when you've got that 200 day window with people when they join, one of the things that they want to understand is how to get it working as quickly as possible. And I've got loads of ideas around that. The thing is about more 4M, a load of people ask me about it. Is there a magic question that you can ask people? Is there a special way of approaching people that they'll come along and they'll join? If there was, what do you think me and Brad would do all day? <laughs> we'd still sit around in one season. No, we'd be down in Taunton just bashing the phones because if it was that simple, I think the proof that I've got I can't remember, we're two and a half years, three years since we launched more for him, network for free, invite a friend. Is that it's a numbers game? These are the, the league tables. Some of you will find yourself mentioned on here. Can you say, you've got to run away if it's like your business line. We'll say it that way. Stop, that's it. Business line. Looking at you, looking away from you. Looking, looking, looking to the audience, I've got a really business line, a power stand. Power stand. <laughs> Brilliant, there you go, you it. It's my time we're taking that. <laughs> John Clapham, 41 free months. Off the top of your head, how many people have you invited? Two to three hundred. I get lots of people around the country saying, but I invited someone and they never came and more for end sort of doesn't work. 41 free months. I haven't got a safety net for this. Any of the people who didn't come, have you ended up doing business with them anyway? Yeah. There's a right and a wrong answer. Yes, you have. <laughs> so you've invited people to 4 end, they didn't come, but you've done business with them anyway. Yes. Win, 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 win all the way through. You've got such an easy way to approach people, such an easy way to talk to people about your business by inviting them along to full networking. They might come along and then you get at least three opportunities to talk to them again about your business. They might join, you get 200 days to talk to them about your business. They might not join and you still do business with them anyway even though they went off and joined BNI or whatever they did. But win, 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 win. Such an easy way to talk to people. If you're not using More4M, invite a friend, please, please do. Use it to invite people along to your groups. Make sure you're getting the benefit from it. 41 months. He's using exactly the same system as the rest of you are. Chris Lodge's second one, regional hey, league, Chris Lodge. Yeah, Michael Eve down in Surrey goes on to other <coughs> networking events and invites people back. And etc. 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 Use more for him. It's a massive, massive benefit. You don't have to pay for membership ever again. John's unlikely to. Because he'll keep adding to that. But who wants to know how to get more out of this thing fast? Yes, sir. In five easy steps. Yeah. Is that all right? Yeah. And who wants to be able to help five? 
Do I have to hold it and smile? Yes. Can I smile? Who wants to be able to tell their members how to get more out of this fast? Yes, yes. The really lovely thing about this is that we had no dress rehearsal and some of what I'm going to talk about, people have already validated. Debbie Huxton bought a membership and didn't use it for three months. Many, many people who come to me and say they want to get their networking working fast simply aren't doing enough of it. You don't have to just go to meetings, but go to more meetings. People say to me, how do I get more out of this thing? I joined three months ago, I've been to four meetings, I didn't really get much from it. I'm not exaggerating that, I have that sort of conversation with people. People can do more of it. Encourage them to passport, encourage them to go to the flagship groups, <coughs> encourage them to use the forum, encourage them to join 4N Hour, watch 4N TV, get involved on social media, encourage them to do all of the stuff that will keep these connections going. Every big opportunity which I've ever had has started with a little conversation. There were people telling me last week they didn't have the time to come to the business show. It's in London, I don't really know what will happen there. If I hadn't gone to the business show now seven years, twice a year, and the return on investment from the first five years was a big fat zero, but if I hadn't carried on doing it, I'd have never have had the conversation that led me to write that book. Most people aren't having enough conversations. <laughs> Most people aren't having enough conversations. And it's so easy. I'm getting better at this. <laughs> Most people aren't having enough conversations. If someone wants to get more out of foreign, do more of it. I was speaking to someone the other week who told me that he didn't have time to get involved in foreign hour. He didn't have time to use the forum. He didn't have time to do this. He didn't have time to do that. I said to him, do you know how Pod Art finished? He said, yeah, I do. Did you watch it? I said, no, you do have time. <laughs> it's a choice. If you choose to use your time watching Pod Art, that's fine. But I promise you there are more people on the Four Networking website and on Twitter who you'll be able to do business with than there are in your sitting room watching Pod Art. <laughs> Or watching Britain's Gone Talent, I didn't watch that either. <laughs> Everyone's got the time. If they're really focused on building their business, and not everyone is, that's cool, but if they're really excited about building their business, they've got the time to network more, to have more of those little conversations that can turn into the big opportunities. Be positive. This, I'm, I'm afraid, this whole part of my foresight actually comes from Chris Lodge's region. And not Chris himself, or not any of his team who are here, but someone who walked into one of your launches once, who actually went on to join, I have to say. Um, but as she arrived in the meeting, she, she complained about the coffee. Very first thing she complained about, she complained about the coffee, she complained about everything during the morning. And she spent the whole morning looking around with a face like a smacked ass, and then was surprised how everyone responded to her in the same way. It was <laughs> Who was it over, as Simon was saying earlier on, someone has one-to-ones with him and tells Simon how rubbish his business is. <laughs> Please do think all the time, it's not just about smiling. It's not just about being stupidly positive. It's about approaching your networking with some sort of positive intent. If you're sat down with a member and they don't feel they're getting much out of it, Ask, I think it was Debbie, ask the, the, the question that Rush Hewer asked her. What do you want to get out of it? Because if you don't know, and if your members don't know what they're aiming to get out of it, then they're not moving forward positively. It's not just about smiling. It's about being positive generally. Positive in the way that you approach it. Positive in the way that you approach your team role as well. Why did you all choose to be area leaders? Shout out. Terry Major. <laughs> for, 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 for the three people who Terry didn't make to it. To help people. Help people? What a massive opportunity to help people get more out of their networking. And if you do that in your business, what a massive profile builder that is for you. Because if you show people how to make networking work better, and you do social media, and you do marketing, what a huge profile builder is that for you. Any other reasons why people became area leaders? Yeah, I'm so glad I could do it. 
Someone say profile. <laughs> profile. <laughs> profile. Profile. <laughs> it cuts both ways. I've asked that question a hundred times, people always shout out profile, that was like pulling teeth. But, it cuts both ways, you've got the profile. As area leaders or as team members, you don't get to choose whether people are looking at you. Because you're on the forum, you're, you're, you're mentioned on the group team pages, you're very visible in the meetings, you don't get the choice as to whether you've got a raised profile. That's, what you, that's one of the reasons that you've done it, but you do get to choose what that profile is. Are you the smiley, positive, helpful team member? Or aren't you? Only you know that, but when you're in a team, particularly when you're in a team, you don't need to walk around with a face like a smacked ass. <laughs> Am I doing okay for time? 15 minutes you got to Oh, blimey. Anyway, so I walked into Whitney Big Breakfast. I've got a story. I've got a couple of stories. I can, I can, I can pad up with it if you need to. Oh, so can I. <laughs> oh, I'm in your time sheet, you fucker. <laughs> Just so that you know, we've fallen out. I've, I've heard this so many times around the network that him and I have fallen out. We've fallen out, apparently. We're not friends anymore. Absolutely bizarre. I keep being told that by people. I've heard you've fallen out with Brad, that's why you're leaving. Absolutely bizarre. Where was I? Be visible. You need somebody. You might still. Be visible. Be visible. Be visible by being really good at what you do. Help people to understand what you do in your 40 seconds, in your one-to-ones. Make sure that people understand what you do so simply that they can take it away and pass it on to other people. Make sure that you're out there all the time. I've managed to build <laughs> huge visibility in this network to the extent that... <laughs> that serious business person, Neil Sayer, of, of Eisted AV, he's, he's, he's Chris's boss. Um, but I've managed to build my visibility to the extent that other people take photographs of my book when they see it out there and share it around. <coughs> You've got such an opportunity, and I know a load of you, and I know a load about your businesses, so that I could pass that on to people, but use the opportunities that you've got in, your, in 4M to build your visibility, so that people know what you do, so that they can refer you. If people don't understand what you do, if you're not out there being visible, then people don't understand what you do to refer you. You can't possibly say to somebody you meet in a pub, Oh, I met this guy, he might be able to help you. Be clear about what you do, be visible. Make sure that it's all over the place. For most of us, most of us, we're not the only person who does what we do in 4M. But I'm speaking to just short of a hundred of thousands of members that we've got around the country. And you guys have got the opportunity to be massively visible. Every part of 4M gives you that visibility. Are you passporting? Are you foresighting? Are you using the forum? Are you on 4M Hour? Are you using the forum again? Are you on the Facebook page? Are you looking at and sharing other people's stuff? Are you building that visibility? One of the best ways to build visibility, one of the best ways to build credibility, one of the best ways to get other people referring your stuff in 4M is to refer other people. Start finding out about other people's businesses and referring them. You will get much more business by passing on stuff for other people than you ever will by immediately going out and trying to sell yourself. Start building visibility by finding other people and seeing how you can help them and using every single bit of 4M. Neil Sayer, professional business person. <laughs> Follow up. Terry's mentioned this earlier on. It staggers me how few people follow up after networking events. It staggers me that people go to all of the trouble of going along to networking events, of doing all of this stuff, of talking to all of these people, and then never taking the next step. The very, I was at the business show last week. The very first time I went to the business show in London, when it was still called the Business Startup Show, was October, November 2007. A guy was exhibiting there, the cheapest standard business show is £2,700. 
and the guy was exhibiting there for the two days, and I went, and I really liked how he had his, he had these special business cards. Really, really liked them. Went up to him and asked if I could buy some, and he said he'd get in touch with me after the show. <laughs> still waiting. Still waiting to this day. Most people, most people don't follow up after networking or business events. You've got a huge opportunity and a huge unfair advantage because every time you go to some sort of event, all of a sudden you've got something in common with everyone else in the room. So you can follow everyone else up just to say, how did you enjoy the Accelerate conference? How did you enjoy the business conference? Any chance we could have a coffee because I was really interested in what you had to say, picking up on what Rachel Shallow said. You've got an opportunity to follow up and most people don't bother. And in 2015 particularly, your members have got so many opportunities. Email, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, the telephone. In 2015, it is still okay to pick up the phone and actually talk to people. I'm picking up on what Rachel Shallow said, invite them for coffee. If you honestly think that what your business does is a match for what their business does, Please do follow up with people and take it further. Most people won't bother, so that's where you'll stand out. If you talk to a load of your members who are telling you that I've been a member for three months, it's not really working for me, ask them the question, how are you following up with people? Are you asking people for one-to-ones outside the meeting? Are you actually talking to people? I bet you'll find that most people aren't bothering. I don't know why people don't. In, um, in 1937, Dale Carnegie wrote, about finding stuff in common with other people. <coughs> You're all four end members. You've immediately got something in common with the other people in the room. Follow up, but don't just hide behind email. I get a load of follow ups from people that say words to the extent of, Hi Steph, it was great to meet you this morning. Now here's a thousand words about what I do and why you should buy from me. How many of you, when you receive emails like that, file them away? <laughs> right, but please don't answer this next question because you'll embarrass yourselves. Based on that, <laughs> how many of you are still sending them? <laughs> Let me promise you a couple of things that will happen as you leave the room today. You'll have had these lovely conversations with people, and then as you leave the room, you'll be checking on your phone, and <coughs> you, you've got two emails from the same client, you've got a missed call from the same client, you've got a text from the kids' school, you're all of a sudden running late and the M6 is blocked again. And all of this stuff, all of this stuff in your life will start to go on in your head and you will start to forget the conversations that you had today or at any networking meeting. And yet, knowing that, we put a different set of rules on everyone else. We expect everyone else to remember us based on a 40 seconds or a very short 10 minute conversation. Everyone else has got the same pressures as you. Everyone else will forget you. It's your job to follow up and remind people that you exist. When you get home tonight, these guys will have the advertising on your television. When does their sale end? <laughs> is it never? Or is it the bank on the so it's not bank on Sunday, you were sure about that, because they're advertising now. Yeah? But you all know that the FS sell sofas, yes? yes. You know that they do interest-free credits. Yes. Yeah, you know all of that, and it's no, it's no deposit. They've been advertising since I was a kid, so they've been advertising for at least 40 years that I know about, since I could remember. They, bearing that in mind, why will DFS advertise on your television tonight <coughs> to tell you a load of stuff that you already know about them? The one thing that DFS don't know about you is when you're gonna get home at the weekend and, oh, the dog's done that thing on the sofa again. Or we've got family coming down for the, for the summer. Or we just need to get a new sofa. DFS need to be there constantly so they're getting at you at the point at which you start to think about buying a new sofa. I may have loved what you had to say in your 40 seconds this morning and in the one-to-one -one that we had, I just don't need a cleaning company in Manchester today and I just don't know, know anyone to refer to them. I may love what you've got to say in your 40 seconds in a couple of weeks time, but I just don't need someone who helps me to self-publish books, I just don't need that today. I may love what you've got to say in three months' time, but it just hasn't clicked how I can use your services. And then in six months' time, I come along to the meeting and I'm thinking, oh, um, who was that guy? Who was that guy who did that thing? And I've lost his card. Um, that's all right, he does something similar. I'll go and talk to him instead. It's your job to keep visible with people. You've got a much bigger opportunity with your four networking membership 
because all that DFS can do is broadcast to you constantly. You've got the opportunity to keep these conversations going, to keep these relationships going, and to keep in people's faces. And the big opportunity is that most people don't bother. So be the person who does. Follow up with people. DFS spent all of that money just to remind you that they sold sofas. So that they can be there at just the right point, and you need to be there at the right point as well. Keep going back for more. Every business show that I went to for five years had a return on investment of zero for me. I didn't achieve, or at least I didn't think I was achieving anything there at all. I was getting to know some lovely people, the other exhibitors, I was getting to know the organisers. All of that was happening. I was sort of quite enjoying it because there's a, a big piss up on the Thursday night and I enjoyed that bit of it. I was enjoying all of it, but the return on investment was zero, or so I thought. But all of these relationships were just taking a little bit of time to fall into place. All of these relationships needed time to fall into place so that at some point the organisers asked me if, if I could be a speaker there. If I'd mind being one of the speakers there for them. The, the return on investment and the relationships that I was getting there and the experience that I was getting in networking was such that these guys asked me to write the book on it. But every, every business show that I went to up until that point and an awful lot of four networking meetings had an absolute zero return on investment. Stop measuring and stop your members measuring the return on investment in the wrong way. All of this is cumulative. I was earwigging at lunchtime because that's what I do. <laughs> I heard Mark Tomlinson saying to someone, of course at two years is when it really kicked in for me. I heard Mark Tomlinson saying that to someone earlier on. Two years, stuff was happening, was pulling in enough business out of it, but at two years it suddenly accelerated for me. It suddenly fell into place. So many people get almost up there, they just can't see what's over the horizon, and then they say, stop this, this is hard work. It doesn't matter if you get it wrong somewhere along the way, or if those meetings have got a zero return on investment. I've done 754 networking meetings. Any other sales environment I've ever been in, you get told you get one chance to make a first impression. But this is the only one I've ever been where you get a second chance or even a 750th chance to make a first impression. Keep going back. I've got a talk there, do you want me to crack it? Go ahead, I'm not going to talk. Brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> That's the <laughs> one. I've been to over 750 four networking meetings. very difficult to measure the return on investment on business networking and social media but it's there and it's there in ways that people don't see it's there in your increasing confidence your increasing confidence in talking about your stuff in your credibility above your around your crowd which you're not seeing it's the sort of stuff that's there and so many people give up far too early on I'm really really not saying that just for the sake of it I see so many people who step away we were talking about this at lunchtime, Brad and I. So many people step away and then someone else comes in who does the same as them and just at the point at which that person had got their, their profile right, their credibility <laughs> right, they were starting to get really decent orders in. They go, oh, well, I've been to that many meetings and it cost me that much and I've only had that many sales and I'm going to step away. And someone else comes in who does the same and steps into that space in the network and takes all of that business that they built up. Just want to say something about being on a team role because I've been on a team role for seven and a half years. And being successful at being on a team role in four networking is hard work. I've done it, I know. You have to put in the phone calls, you have to go to a lot of meetings, you have to be the person there putting up the banners, you have to do all of this stuff. Being successful at anything in networking is hard work. You have to get up at, who was it? It was your business partner who I met up in Lincoln left home at 3.15 to get to a four networking meeting. The other 
No. <laughs> but if you want to be successful in networking, it's hard work. You have to put all in all of this effort. It's really simple. It's just not that easy. Being unsuccessful in your team role is really, really hard. You have to sit in a room where other people are saying, yeah, we get 36 every week. And you're thinking, oh, we've got seven. You, you have to be the person who's apologising to the visitor because you've had to cancel the meeting or negotiating with the venue because you haven't got enough people there to pay for it. Being unsuccessful in networking is really, really hard. I've done both. <laughs> Being successful in networking is hard. Being unsuccessful in networking is really hard. All you have to do is choose your hard. Thank you very much for listening.